This is VOA News. I'm David Byrd. Hong Kong is bracing for another weekend of protests following months of unrest that have plunged the Chinese-ruled territory into chaos. Zhe Chengcheng, a police spokesman, said during a news conference Friday that several groups had applied for permits to demonstrate and they had been denied. We have conducted independent risk assessment for each of these applications and issued letters of objection to three of them out of concern about public safety, public order, and protection of rights and freedoms of others. Zhe said that the groups had appealed those decisions. Hong Kong police also defended their crowd control actions on Halloween when riot police officers fired tear gas to break up crowds down the hill in the central business district. Revelers complained they were ruining the party spirit near the upmarket club district of Lan Kwai Fong on Thursday, the first time that the district had been targeted. Thousands of protesters took to the streets of Baghdad on Friday, confronting security forces on two bridges leading from the iconic Tahrir Square to the heavily fortified Green Zone. One woman died after being struck in the head with a tear gas canister. The Iraqi Human Rights Commission said more than 150 people were wounded when security forces opened fire with rubber bullets and tear gas. This month's protests in Iraq and similar demonstrations in Lebanon are fueled by local grievances and mainly directed at political elites, but they also pose a challenge to Iran, which closely backs both governments. Security forces have killed at least 250 people in Iraq in anti-government protests in the past month. For more, visit our website, voanews.com. This is VOA News. Turkey and Russia launched joint patrols on Friday in northeastern Syria under a deal that halted a Turkish offensive against Syrian Kurdish fighters. Reuters correspondent Emily Spickle has details. A new military convoy rolling through northern Syria. These Turkish armored vehicles are heading to join their Russian counterparts. Ground and air units are also involved in the patrol. Overnight, the Turkish Defense Ministry said Turkey had handed over 18 men to the Russians. It's believed they are Syrian government soldiers who were detained in Syria near the Turkish border this week. At one point, this would have been an unlikely alliance. Russia is the Syrian government's most powerful ally, while Turkey has long backed Syria's rebel fighters. The Turkish-Russian deal last week allowed Syrian government forces to move back into areas around the border that they hadn't been to for years. That's Reuters' Emily Spickle. Spain has offered to host the next United Nations Global Climate Summit after the president of Chile said his country could no longer stage the event. AP's Charles de Ledesma reports. UN Climate Chief Patricia Espinosa says officials have accepted Spain's offer to host the COP25 conference from December 2 to 13 in Madrid after previous host Chile pulled out at short notice. Chile's president couldn't as well proceed with a summit of Asia-Pacific leaders, saying he must instead focus on restoring security in his country following weeks of protests in which at least a dozen people have died. I'm Charles de Ledesma. A proposed Trump administration rule would let faith-based groups exclude LGBT parents. AP's Walter Ratliff has details. The Trump administration is proposing a rule that would allow faith-based foster care and adoption agencies to continue getting taxpayer funding even if they exclude LGBT families and others from their services based on religious beliefs. The White House says the rule is needed to remove barriers that prevent some nonprofits from helping vulnerable people in their communities. The conservative advocacy group, the Family Research Council, applauded the move. It says charities would no longer have to choose between abandoning their faith or abandoning homeless children. But LGBT groups say the administration's plan would reduce the number of qualified parents wanting to adopt or foster a child. I'm Walter Ratliff. And former Democratic Congressman Beto O'Rourke has dropped out of the 2020 presidential campaign. On Twitter, O'Rourke said he's proud of championing issues like gun control and climate change, but he lacks the means to move forward. For more, log on to our website, voanews.com. I'm David Byrd, VOA News.